Hi, everybody. Joe Chaffee here, Weather in 5, five days and five minutes. And just a reminder that tonight's Joe and Joe Weather Show, uh, we will be talking about the heat wave in the east. We'll be talking about thunderstorms and the potential for severe weather going forward, uh, especially uh, for tomorrow and Friday. Nothing's going to happen today. And, of course, we're going to have the latest on uh, Tropical Storm Lee, which by the time we do the show tonight is uh, going to be a hurricane. So that's all tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show at 7.35 p.m. Eastern Time. So uh, moving ahead now to uh, what's going on this afternoon. Uh, we are seeing, of course, uh, hot weather up and down the eastern seaboard. And you can thank the fact that we are trapped uh, in between the remnant low of Hurricane Idalia, southeast of Nova Scotia, just rotating and rotating and not moving. And that's created this log jam. And you've got this next weather system in the Great Lakes with its trailing cold front extending down into Tennessee and northern Mississippi. Some showers and thunderstorms are being produced. This uh, that can't really make progress eastward until the low southeast of Nova Scotia weakens and gets out of the way. That's going to happen tomorrow, albeit slowly. So this front is essentially going to be crawling eastward. And once it reaches the east coast, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. It's going to be hanging around from later Thursday right through the weekend and into early next week. That's going to pose some issues uh, every day with the threat for showers and storms. Meanwhile, as of 2.15 uh, p.m. Eastern time, we've got some storms up in northern Michigan and also some storms in parts of southern Ohio, central Kentucky and eastern Tennessee, and even down into southern Mississippi. Of course, uh, there is the possibility of some severe weather this evening and into the first part of tonight. Make sure you go to weather.gov for the latest weather information regarding your local area. The Storm Prediction Center for uh, today uh, is indicating a marginal to slight risk of severe weather from the Great Lakes down to, uh, through the Ohio and Tennessee Valley and then west into north central Texas. The slight risk in southeastern Arkansas, northern Mississippi, and southwest Tennessee. Uh, the uh, Storm Prediction Center for tomorrow has now added an area of slight risk uh, for western New England, upstate New York, northwest New Jersey, central and eastern Pennsylvania, much of Maryland, and northeastern Virginia. Uh, that comes with a tornado risk, and actually less than 2% tornado risk. So it's basically wind uh, and some hail issues that are being considered. Marginal risk in parts of the plains uh, down into the lower Mississippi Valley. And then as we move on to day three, which is Friday into Saturday, we still have a marginal risk from Maine down to Virginia. I would not at all be surprised if we wind up seeing an additional enhanced risk uh, area being added with this. And heavy rain, I think, may wind up being the bigger story here from these uh, thunderstorms because they're, they, they're going to be of the type that probably won't be moving very much. So the weather prediction folks are showing uh, inch and a half to three inch plus amounts from the southern Appalachians northeastward through uh, uh, central and northern Virginia, eastern and central Pennsylvania, northwest New Jersey, the Hudson Valley, upstate New York, and western New England, and even up into northern New England as well. Uh, we also have half to three quarter inch amounts common in the uh, in eastern Colorado, down into eastern New, Me New Mexico, and into the southern and central plains with an area of an inch and a half plus indicated for much of Central Texas. This is an area that's not really seen much in the way of thunderstorm activity this summer, and, and rainfall has been minimal. So that actually might be good news for them. And that's it from the standpoint of rainfall with this cold front, because again, it's going to be hanging around for a while. Let's take a look at uh, Tropical Storm Lee. This is the uh, these are the model forecasts for Lee uh, from uh, earlier today. Very tightly clustered on a west-northwest course for the next five days, then a bend more northwest in the latter part of the forecast period in days six and seven. But the spread between the furthest west and the furthest east is only about 200 or so miles. It's a fairly tight view here. Uh, so it lends a lot of confidence when you see the models do that, especially in the long range when, they sit, when they're tightly clustered. And this is definitely going to become a major hurricane. I think it's going to be at least a Cat 4, and it would not shock me if it gets to a Cat 5. And we do have some of the intensity models actually uh, bringing it to a Category 5 hurricane. One of them as soon as uh, 72 hours from now. 
just about all of them have it at least as a cap three and the majority of models are making this a, a category four. Here's the latest satellite loop, uh, the visible satellite loop showing all the signs of a strengthening system, a well-defined core. You see the feathering of the high clouds getting blown away on the periphery. That's uh, telling you that uh, this thing is in strengthening mode. So it may already be a hurricane, even though it's, so, it's still being classified as a tropical storm as of the uh, 11 a.m. advisory. I think by 5 p.m. they're going to make this a hurricane. And it's moving on a fairly steady course uh, to the west-northwest. So uh, no issues from Lee at all uh, for anyone, I think, through the weekend. I, I think that's a pretty fair statement. It's going, to prob it's going to pass north of the northernmost Leeward Islands. It will pass north of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands and the Dominican Republic. So there's no issue there other than the ocean getting roughed up. Now, as far as the longer term view of all of this, we're going to take a look at the upper air, which, of course, we've got this heat ridge in the eastern part of the United States. It's going to be weakening uh, today and tomorrow, a trough approaching from the Great Lakes. The Nova Scotia Idalia Low is now finally moving, but this trough to the east gets to the east coast and then gets hung up. And that's because an upper high in the Atlantic is building back westward at the same time. So we're going to have a stalled cold front along the east coast. Right through the weekend. Sorry for the audio glitch there. Right through the weekend. Then, as that trough starts to weaken, we see Lee approaching from the southeast, well east of the Bahamas. A new trough overwhelms the Great Lakes down into the central Gulf states. And Lee is forecast to get caught by that and get and turn northward, passing halfway between Bermuda and the Carolinas, and then northeastward, southeast of Cape Cod, and passing just south of Nova Scotia. Now, we're talking about something that's basically eight or nine days away. And I think there's still a lot of volatility in the models in terms of how this upper trough in the eastern part of the United States is going to take shape. So um, we're just going to kind of take a wait and see attitude at this point. If, if, if you had to bet, I would say uh, this will be an out to sea storm, but I can't rule out a more westward track until we see that upper air. Uh, clear up in terms of how deep the trough is going to be. What's the shape of that trough? Uh, is the north going to be more important than the south? Because that ultimately will determine, I think, whether the system recurves or uh, makes a move a bit more to the west toward the U.S. east coast. And then we're going to be obviously watching it far more carefully. We're going to get into great detail on this tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show at 7.35 p.m. We'll have the U U new European model run uh, to compare. So be sure and tune in tonight at 7.35 p.m. Eastern Time.